And ahead of Nigeria's 60th independence anniversary, Nigerians across the world have been challenged to intercede for the country. The concept, tagged Project 720, is an exercise to engage 720 persons praying every day for an hour, a minute uh, for 24 hours, uh, for 30 days uh, for the country. Joining us to talk more on uh, praying for Nigeria are Obi Pax Harry, a visioner, Arise Nigeria Project, and uh, Mrs. Yemisi Subair, uh, coordinator, Arise Nigeria Project. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to kick off with uh, um, Obia Pax Harry. Um, pray, to what extent is this call? Uh, because there's you know, some people that would argue that this is not what Nigeria needs at this time. Um, of course, arguing also that the country has been very religious with little to show as development. Well, I, I beg to um, disagree. I would say that this is exactly what Nigeria needs coming up to her 60th birthday. What is so different about what we're doing is that um, it is to a common good, uh, the, uh, the vision of Arise Nigeria Project 720 is to uh, pray that uh, for oaks of righteousness, that is um, Nigerians, men and women who are going to be standard bearers, who are going to be um, transformational leaders who are, are going to be ethical leaders to move the nation forward. So it's not a religious um, exercise that um, is, uh, is to, to no avail. Uh, indeed, it is one that we are so passionate about because of the way the instruction came that uh, we didn't even know that there were 720 hours in the month of September because you don't go calculating the hours in a month. But there are 720 hours in, 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 in September. And if our God would say, you know, that we are to pray every hour, it means every hour produces someone who's going to be able to move our nation forward because that's what we need, transformational leaders and not transactional ones as we have had. So I, I, I want to put forward that this is an, an exercise that um, is not a religious one, but is, a, um, is one of conviction and is one that we are we're very certain would, you know, produce what God wants to produce. I, indeed, among many of us praying, we could even be the oaks of righteousness. So we are experiencing the personal transformation as we you know, um, pray and speak the right words over our nation. Uh, all right. I want to ask, you know, of course, uh, still to uh, um, um, Mrs. Uh, Harry, I want to ask about, you know, how you would respond to statements like, um, we've been praying for so long. Every Sunday there, you know, still are intercessory prayers for Nigeria um, for the longest, you know, time possible. Um, but, it doesn't seem like a lot has changed or it, you know, it has been effective. It doesn't seem like those prayers have been able to give us the leaders that we seek. How would you respond to that um, to encourage anyone to believe that this might be a little different? Fair enough. What I would like to say to anyone that is listening that prayer is not an end. Prayer is a means to an end. So while we pray, we have to understand that our prayers give us opportunity to take action. And that's where we need to be able to move. We need to become a little bit more um, connected with reality of what you know, our situation is. Uh, if you read the Bible, indeed, Jesus was radical. He didn't just you know, pray, he prayed and he worked. And so that's the transition that we are hoping will occur. And that's uh, why you know, we believe so much in Project 720, you know, and that it all makes sense. And, you know, the, 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 the scripture that, you know, governs this, Matthew 720 says, by their fruit you shall know them. So we need to really think about it and not just pray without thinking about it. If, if Jesus says, by their fruit you shall know them, it means we are talking about people whose character should define them going forward. And it also informs us that we're talking about the future. Where there is a problem, is where we wear blinkers and we use prayer as, as a cover. It's not an end. It's a means to an end. And that's what we've got to communicate. And that's where what, what we're communicating on this project. I think 
the, the, the reason a lot of people are connecting to it is that it, it really gives a practical message. It's a call to action. It's something that really touches the heart. You know, it's not a, a religious mask. It's not a, an, an a exercise of religion. I personally believe that prayer makes a way for you to be able to see, you know, the, 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 the action plan, the strategy of God. To, to I mean, you don't pray and then, you know, don't vote. You don't pray and then, you know, don't choose your leaders right. You don't pray and not be connected, you know, with the reality of what's on ground. So, no, it's it's totally different here. Okay, you know, so um, we, hold, we, hold on, hold on a, a second. Um, apologies, we'll need to uh, interject here. Uh, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll continue with this conversation and also be speaking with uh, Yemisi Super. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Breakfast and uh, still having a conversation this uh, morning with uh, Obi Pax Hari and uh, Mrs. Yemisi Subai. We're talking about the 720, as it is called, a project that is uh, set to encourage Nigerians to pray for the country. So I want to speak with Mrs. Subai now. Um, I, I want to quickly get your views on prayer and why you think this might be the answer. Thank you very much. Uh, prayer is always the answer. And as uh, Apostle Obi said, it's not an end, it's a means to an end. And um, the way the Project 720 is structured, uh, we're all praying the same prayer. And um, as you pray that prayer, you know, it's, it focuses your mind on the, it, it awakens you to begin to think about solutions, not just talking about the problems, but it awakens you in many ways. It brings hope to your mind because you're praying to a God that answers prayers. You're not just talking to yourself. You're talking to a God that can do all things. And so um, what we really need at this point in time is indeed prayer. And this sort of prayer, prayer that awakens, you know, prayer of revival, prayer that brings to your consciousness the sort of not just the problems, but the solutions to the problems. And that's why we say that um, the focus of Project 720 is about raising 720 oaks of righteousness. These are people that are selfless. These are people that are you know, transformational change agents. These are people that will stand up to be counted, whether anybody recognizes them or not, in their various spheres of influence. Because the, we're praying, we're touching every part of our national life. And many of the people that are praying are involved in activities, either by way of employment or business, in some of those sectors. And so as, as the prayer is going on, they're beginning to see and find that, you know, they can be used to bring solution in their sectors. Thank you. All right. Um, 60 years is symbolic. And I'm still speaking with uh, Mrs. Subai now. Um, 60 years is symbolic. Um, why did you choose to do this now? Um, at this time in our, in our country's history? Well, we didn't choose to do this now. This is an instruction from God that Apostle Obi received. So it's not the idea of man. It's not something that somebody thought and said, oh, this would be nice. This is a nice way to celebrate Nigeria at 60. And what that speaks to you is that God is thinking about this nation. God is mindful of us as a people. And that brings so much joy. I mean, it's a privilege, you know, so it's not that we thought it up. It's a vision received from God by Apostle Obi. Brilliant. And now let's speak with um, Obi uh, Harry now. Um, I want to get your thoughts on this. Nigeria over time has been plagued with uh, religious intolerance. A uh, case in mind, of course, is in southern Kaduna. What more would you recommend to end this age-long feud between natives and settlers in the name of uh, religious differences? Well, I think that wherever there is a gap, you know, um, there, there's someone that's not told the truth. There's someone that is benefiting from it. I think if we all begin to kind of get a, um, a, 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 a global vision of what is required, I mean, if we all begin to uh, get a, a new understanding of what crimes to humanity is, such as racism, tribalism, I think if we begin to uh, define some of these activities, then we begin to um, figure out the people that are in between who are not telling the truth. The truth of the matter is where, you know, government is effective and where we have these oaks of righteousness that we are really praying will come out. These are people that, 
you know, uh, the Bible calls them because we're Christians, repairers of the breach. There's absolutely uh, no reason for any man not to have love for the other man. There is absolutely no reason for religion to be a divider or tribe or tongue. I think what it is is selfishness and what it is is selfish interest. So wherever, you know, um, a dividends of democracy is enjoyed by the people, there is mutual respect. There is respect for what the other believes. And really people get converted to what you believe by the the, 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 the way that you live out your life. And that has to be the a message that, you know, comes out. This is why we need the Oaks of Righteousness. And what is so awesome about when you say Oaks of Righteousness, these are people, men and women that are planted. When you say planted by God, God works through man. And that's another thing that we've got to understand. I think in Africa, we've got to do a lot more uh, uh, work and uh, we have to be more committed to pragmatic practice of the faith. And we have to, you know, follow, you know, the our role model, Jesus Christ, who embodied love and who embodied um, not tolerance, who, but who embodied love and community and, and respect and wisdom and all of that. So, you know, with Salvan Kaduna and all of that, what makes any any um, Nigerian feel that they are better than the other? What makes any Nigerian feel that they should, you know, take the resources of Nigeria and give to others as handouts? What exactly makes you think that you should take the wealth of a people and give it to them as handouts and expect gratitude uh, from them and by their hearts? So there is a lot that is wrong. We, are, we, have, a, we have an issue with values, you know, our value system's gone wrong. We the values erosion and we really desperately need prayers at this time. And we're not the only ones praying. All over Nigeria, Nigerians are praying in droves for the 60th year. We could just believe this time that this is going to be a, a catalytic one. We could just believe that, you know, the collection of the efforts of Nigeria and speaking was prayer. Prayer is communicating to God. You know, like uh, Mrs. Subaya said, you know, this, 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 a lot of the people, the change agents, a lot of the people that are involved in uh, Arise Nigeria Project 720 are people that are already positioned in these spheres. Okay. You know, so, you know, when you talk about, you know, religious divide and, uh, you know, religious wars, it, it, it's really uh, barbaric that in, 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 the, in the 21st century, people are still fighting the kind of wars that they should right. not fight. And right. what is so I, sad I, I, is I that the people that are involved at, uh... in these wars are already disenfranchised. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I would want to say that, you know, that's a good question. And, and that question actually, you know, um, um, kind of enhances and, and it helps, you know, our message that there are Nigerians who can actually do a lot about Nigeria. All right, so hold, hold on. Let me let me go back to um, Ms., uh, Mrs. Subair. I, I want to quickly ask now, you are the uh, coordinator of the Arise Nigeria project. I want to ask about um, accommodating other religions because we just spoke about religious tolerance. And I think I'm going to have this question go both ways um, to you and, of course, uh, Mrs. Um, Obi Hari. Um, how do you plan accommodating other Nigerians um, of other religious beliefs in this project? Um, are other people also welcome to join, you know, and um, of course also pray for Nigeria with this project? People with, Thank you know, you of course, much. different religious no, beliefs. The thing about prayer is that um, it's a journey of faith and you must believe in the God that you're praying to. Mm -hmm. Now we are praying in the name of Jesus and we're praying to Jehovah God. So if you do believe in Jesus and you believe in God, then you're welcome to join, you know, because the way we, we're, we're all praying the same prayers, we have a central prayer bulletin. And if, as long as you believe, uh, the, the problem is if you don't believe, why would you join? Why would you pray to a God you don't believe in? So that's where but everybody is welcome to join as long as you believe. All right, okay, let's also have um, Obi Pax Harry also respond to that. What can I add to such a brilliant answer, really? <laughs> I couldn't even add anything more to, you know, that brilliant answer that really summarizes everything. It, it, you're, you're welcome to join us. And, but as Mrs. Subaya said, you know, it, it really, she's, she's answered it. There, there's really, we're, we're praying in the name of Jesus Christ. And you are welcome. And what is so amazing about Nigeria is that our diversity is our strength. I mean... You know, I, I, I'm in Abuja when I'm in Nigeria, and you, a lot of, you know, Muslims, you know, come 
through our place. But you see, you don't have to drop your values for anything. But what you believe in is what you, I mean, I'm talking about us, our faith. So we're praying in the name of Jesus and really everyone is welcome. Our, our, our call really is to convert, you know, <laughs> you know, you into the, the, the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. So you're, you're, in fact, you're welcome, you know, to come in the, in the in 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 the pathway of the of the name of Jesus to, to join us. Okay. Honestly, you are welcome. Quick, quickly, also Jesus. speak on the seven hundred and twenty oaks, uh, like you mentioned. Um, how do you pull this pe uh, people together? Um, do you have a do you already have you know a plan on gathering these seven hundred and twenty people, and what is expected of them? Okay. Um, I'll also give our coordinator opportunity to extend it. What, what is remarkable about, you know, um, God and prayer is that there is a stirring. As we pray, you know, like, like I said, there's 720 people praying every hour. And the instruction is to pray because the hand of God, that is, you know, people are going to get stirrings. For instance, in the center that I run in Abuja, uh, the only member of how a rep that is from uh, the Labour Party was mentored right by us. We've had several people that we intentionally mentor, you know, for governance, intentionally mentor to run, you know, elections, intentionally mentor. So there are people already who, you know, uh, have the capacity, you know, so the, the worst of us are leading the best of us. So our hope is that as we pray, the best of us, we have the courage to come out, you know, to to, 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 to fight for, you know, the heart and soul of our nation. And I say that again, the worst of us are leading the best of us. And the time has come for there to be a shift. So we are praying, you know, if the, the oaks of righteousness could be us, you know, as we pray, we believe that the consciousness, you know, of Nigerians, those that are praying, those that are joining, those that are hearing about it will be awakened. When your consciousness is awakened, then your conscience will be awakened. And when your conscience is awakened, you're going to make some difficult decisions. You're going to take some risks. And, and really, there is... Um, uh, yeah, there is, you know, no one that can fix Nigeria except Nigerians. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I, 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 that is where, um, that is my kind of stance on this matter. Yeah. That as we pray, you know, those oaks of righteousness are people whose character, you know, has been tested already people who qualify, who will no longer allow the worst of us to lead the best of us. All right, um, Mrs. Subai, I think you can also quickly speak on that. You know, I'm still talking about the selection process for the 720 Oaks. Um, and as the number increases, you know, and it most likely goes, goes more than 720. Um, how does that uh, work out? Okay, there is no selection. Um, it's for anybody who is willing. But the way we've structured is was to set up 10 groups and we appointed 10 generals and each general is to find 72 people who are willing to pray. And that makes 10 times 72 is 720. So you have 720 and then the 720 are now, you know, we're covering the 24 hours. So that means 30 people to pray every hour. So that's the way we're running it. Um, now talking about the um, Oaks of Righteousness, how do they, how do they arise? Um, our prayer is that as we are praying, we trust God that there will be a stirring the truth is, there's so many brilliant Nigerians all over the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, we read about them all the time, even in the British Parliament. There are many Nigerians there in America, in medical science. Mm -hmm. Nigerians are doing a lot of great things. And um, there's so, even here locally, there are lots of Nigerians. And many people, are, you know, they sort of like have apathy towards uh, affairs of the nation. But our prayer is that as we continue to stare in the spirit, Many people who otherwise wouldn't have come out to be counted will now step out and step up into the scene. And, uh, you know, these are the oaks of righteousness that we're talking about. And as we mentioned, um, some of the people who are praying themselves are oaks of righteousness. And, you know, this prayer is bringing to their consciousness that they too can be part of the solution. Okay, well, when does this start? Um. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Harry, can you respond to that? When, do, when does this start? 
Oh, we started on the 1st of September okay. and it's running through the 30th of September. And guess what is exciting? Many nationals, many uh, people from other nations have joined us. And that's really exciting as far as Dominican Republic, as far as Aruba, as far as Curaçao, and obviously in the United States, people that are non-Nigerians have joined us all praying for uh, Nigeria at 60, 60. So yes, on the 30th of um, September at midnight, you all know, right. this particular, um, uh, the prayer um, ceases. And I believe that Project 720 will then go into a different um, um, dimension of, you know, uh, preparing, you know, uh, these oaks of righteousness and being there to serve whatever next that God has for us. All right. Um, Obi Pax Harry, a vision of uh, Arise Nigeria Project, and of course, uh, Mrs. Yemsi Subair, uh, coordinator Arise Nigeria Project. Thank you both for speaking with us. Um, of course, Thank looking forward to much. another conversation always. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.